Hey YouTube, today we're going to talk about a subject that I usually shy away from and it is politics and the subject for today is going to be firearms and politics and how they intermingle and um, some of the things that people need to think about. Now, the reason I'm making this video and I'm going to get to my normal green is there's an important election coming up. And a lot of people will tell you that this is one of the most important elections that you will ever take part in or experience in your lifetime. And I don't believe that's necessarily true. I think every single election from the time you're born until the time that you pass is an important election. I think they're all equally as important. And I think it gives us as U.S. citizens the right to display our thoughts and our beliefs by making our, casting our vote. Now, there are people in the government that do not believe this, and they want to take some of your rights away that were written by our founding fathers in the Constitution. And one of the things that I'm strongly believe in is the Second Amendment. And it's obvious if you look at my YouTube channel, I'm a big time Second Amendment person. And it states in the um, Second Amendment, you have the right to bear arms, and that right shall not be infringed. Now, over the years, over the many years that I've been on this earth, there, um, the government has tried and tried and tried to infringe upon these um, rights, and they've done it repeatedly. And the people that live in these certain states and vote a certain way, they're fine with that. But if you took some of their rights away that they strongly believe in, they're going to fight you um, tooth and nail. And, and I think it's absolutely amazing that they think it's okay for their right to infringe on your rights, but if it's something they believe in, no, that's fine. Well, folks, that's not the way it works. The, the, the rights are your rights, and whether you believe in them or not, they're your rights, and they were written in the Constitution. So what I have here in front of us, I have a selection of firearms that I personally own, and every single one of them, there's a problem with the government. Every single one of them, they've either tried to, um, they've tried to ban them at one point in time, or they're trying to ban them currently, or there's something going on with each one of these firearms, and I want to talk about it a little bit today. So, in 1994, um, they passed, the Clinton administration passed an assault weapons ban, and what it was, was one side... One side compromised a little bit to to pass this assault weapons ban, and they've been trying to do it forever. And the definition of assault weapon is I don't know, and neither does anybody else. You can't tell me what an assault weapon is because there is no clear defined definition of an assault weapon. But they tried to define it in this assault weapons ban, and the only way it really got passed was. There was a 10-year sunset, so after 10 years, the assault weapons ban would be lifted, and we'd go back on our merry ways. Well, well, folks, what did that really accomplish? All it did was put a lot of people in economic hardship that manufacture, certain, that manufacture firearms. It made law-abiding citizens who collect firearms and are into firearms made it a lot harder for them to obtain certain things, and it drove the price to the roof on things that already existed. So nobody won in that. The crime never went down. It's been proven time after time after time. It did nothing except for cause problems. Well, they try and do all this again, and some things that they tried to pin, and some of the logic that they came up with just absolutely makes no sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me. So what I have here, I have a few things that I'm going to go through with you, and I'm going to show you why the government is not logical. None of them that are voting on this know anything about firearms or what they're talking about. All they know is they think something is evil, they don't believe in it, and they want to do away with it. And the way you can make a difference is at the voter box. Cast your ballot and pay attention to these people that you're voting for, what they believe in. There's a lot of states in the United States of America that are not what I consider free states. But these people continue over and over and over to vote the same people in, the same type of people in, decade after decade. And then they complain about where they live. I get complaints every single day on this YouTube channel about where people live, how this isn't a free state. Well, you simply move. Take your tax dollars away from that state, and it will. The way you affect some anybody in this world is you hit them in the pocketbook. That's the way you do it, folks. And it's sad to say it, but my daddy once said, 
he most famously said, whenever somebody says it's not about the money, it's about the money. It always is, folks. So let's go through a couple of these things and um and show you some of the government of the or some of the logic of the government. Now I've showed pretty much every one of these firearms before at different times, so I've never shown it on this particular subject matter. So we're gonna go through a couple things here. So what I have here is I have a Ruger Mini 14. This is a really old Ruger Mini 14 from the 70s. I believe this is the first year. Um, production one and this was manufactured by a company called ruger and it was started by bill ruger well bill ruger was not your friend folks he's not a firearms guy and he'll never be a firearms guy will never be anything now because he's no longer alive but ruger mini 14 so this has never been on the radar of the government because look at it it's it's got a wooden stock and it doesn't look evil but in all actuality this is a semi-automatic magazine fed um, rifle that shoots the same rounds as the evil black rifles and bill ruger while he was alive never believed in having a magazine a detachable magazine that held more than 10 rounds and you could not buy a ruger magazine during the assault weapons ban or any time that he was alive to help more than 10 rounds unless you were law enforcement or military but as soon as bill ruger passed ruger got their um act straightened out and they started manufacturing stuff now this rifle is identical in every respect to the one below it they're both i mean this one was made in the 80s and this was made in the 70s they function the same way they do the exact same thing but the difference in this one is it has a stock on it that folds. So you open this up, and it has a folding stock on it. And that made it evil. It instantly made it a banned item in the United States during the assault weapons ban. And I cannot imagine how this, this will make a weapon more deadly. I don't understand it, but that's the government logic in it. You can't have it with a folding stock, but you can have it like this. The same action, same size barrel, same rounds. This one happens to have one of the evil... Um, large um, capacity magazines in it, but so does this one during the assault weapons ban. You could not have a magazine that held more than 10 rounds. This one holds 40 and this one holds 20. Both of them were illegal then. But this rifle was especially illegal because it had a folding stock on it. It's the exact same rifle in every way. How is that logical? Is this one more deadly than this one? It absolutely is not. Same round, same action, same trigger, same manufacturer. Makes it look different. So how does the looks of something make something more deadly or puts it on the quote unquote ban list? Ask the government folks. This is the people that that some people continuously vote in the office and they're the ones that's deciding what your rights can be. So another one we're gonna look at here is this um, this Mac 11 here. This is a Cobra Mac 11 and this is from 1989 is when this was manufactured. This was specifically on the list. It said you cannot have one of these. They specifically named this out. You cannot own one of these. Now, what is it, folks? Well, in real short, short terms, it is a 9mm pistol. And they make so many different 9mm pistols in this earth, right? On, in this world right now that you, you couldn't possibly name them all. But this was one of the ones that they didn't want you to have. And, I have no idea why, because that is the most awkward shooting weapon that I have ever personally fired. I own it. I own it because I think it's cool, but it's very awkward. It's very heavy. It's a handgun, and you can't hit the broadside of a barn unless you really learn how to shoot that thing. And the sights are horrible on it. It just, it's just everything about it's bad. It has a 30 round magazine in it, and they don't like it. They, the magazine was not the reason that thing was banned. The reason it was banned is because of all the movies that came out. Everybody had watched Miami Vice and all the gangster movies, and people were killing people with Tech Nines. I guess if they had had lever action 22s, those would have been on the assault weapons van, but they weren't. They think those are fine. So we've covered a couple of those. Now, the next thing we're going to get into is this little guy right here. This is an AR pistol. 
they absolutely want these done away with they don't want them so mine here is configured with nothing on it except for a buffer tube this is required to make this rifle well it's not a rifle it's a pistol make this pistol work you have to have that on there if you attach any kind of um, braids or stock on this thing you chest a stock on it, it instantly becomes illegal because it's a short barrel rifle the short barrel rifle is an nfa item and you have to register it and the government tracks it and you have to pay a 200 tax stamp and all kinds of stuff man it's just a big hassle so people came up with the concept of having a pistol and calling it an ar pistol well they started attaching braces to them i don't know why the government has a problem with the braces it doesn't do anything more than it does in the configuration it is right now but they absolutely the atf published a rule that got struck down in court that says those are illegal and you have to register them with the um, ATF or you're going to be a convicted felon. Well, folks, that didn't fly because the ATF doesn't make rules, nor does any government agency that has that has an anacronym in it. Any of those alphabet agencies do not make laws. What makes laws is the congressman. Congress makes laws and you are fixing to vote for all the congressmen. So I want you to think about that before you go and cast your vote. So the one, the other one we're going to look at here is this this um, AR right here. This is an older Colt, and as you can see, it's not loaded. And right here on it, it says restricted military military um, law enforcement use only. It says it right here on the roll marks. And this was made during the assault weapons, man, and you could only buy this if you were a military person. And the reason it was because it had this bayonet lug on it, it had this flash hider on it, and it had this pistol grip on it, and it had a telescoping stock. Now, those, those things make that thing pretty deadly, I guess. They just absolutely, and it has a 30 round magazine in it, they just do not want any of that. Now, I want somebody in the comments to tell me any time that somebody has attached a bayonet to that thing and gone and killed anybody. I promise you, you can't find it anywhere in the news, anywhere out in the public. Has anybody ever, has anybody ever killed anybody with a bayonet on the end of an AR-15? It's never going to happen, and it never has happened, folks. It, why would anybody go <laughs> through the trouble to attach a bayonet onto something to kill somebody with why don't you just use the gun that would that would make more sense the flash hider what does a flash hider do it does absolutely nothing folks it doesn't make the weapon any more efficient it doesn't make it any more concealable it does nothing on there so that's two of the things the pistol grip thing as i pointed out with this rifle this rifle has a pistol grip on it this one does it well, you grip them the same way, you shoulder them the same way, so how is this one actually more efficient than that? It's not, folks. The pistol grip does nothing. With that telescoping um, stock on that thing, all that does is make the rifle more comfortable. You can take that stock off of that thing, and I can shoot it every bit as efficient as it didn't have a stock on it at all. And I don't, I don't understand the government's reasoning, but this is the type of people that get voted in the office time after time after time after time and folks i mean you got you got to think about this before you go vote do your research look up the people that's running in your district or running in your state or your nation for that matter look at what these people believe in and it's not just the firearms thing it's everything it's it's monetary policy it's the economy it's everything you know you have to do your research those people represent you and you are the ones that pay their paycheck and you are the ones that elect them now this past election that's about to happen these people on one side don't even realize that their rights were taken from them they didn't even get, their vote did not count at all. They absolutely removed a candidate from the ballot and inserted another one that nobody voted for. <laughs> there was never a primary for this person to be on the ballot, and they're fine with it. That's how people think. They get rooked into things because sleight of hand. People can be very 
very persuasive when you listen to them. Don't get into a trance. Don't have tunnel vision. Just do your research, folks. That's all I ask. I was going to do this video in a little bit different way. I was going to show a whole entire collection of firearms, and I figured I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to point out a couple of particular ones that they have a problem with. I want this to pertain to life in general, not just firearms. Firearms is a big part of my life, but there's also other things that make the world go around, folks. And you got to you gotta look at all of the whole entire picture when you go cast your vote. Get out there and vote. Don't, don't sit there and be the guy that complains about everything, guy or girl, that complains about everything without casting your vote. It's very important for you. And I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm not going to tell you who I'm voting for or with any of them, but... You can probably figure out things, folks, if you watch watch my channel. And if you're watching this and you are you subscribe to this channel or you continuously watch some of my videos, you can probably figure it out. It's not really not hard to figure out. But anyway, folks, enough of my soapbox for the day. I'm going to let you guys go and hope everybody got something out of this. Thank you very much for watching my video today. And you folks have a great day.